Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with another brand new Mattel Jurassic World Danger Pack release. This is another Chaos Theory figure, as we've got the Jackapill, and this one was really cool, and it was only recently revealed, like maybe just a few weeks back, and it's already out on the market and showing up at Walmarts. And you can see it's a pretty cool looking figure, honestly, of a very obscure species. Another one, this is two for two from Mattel with this lineup, this wave of figures that we did not have like I've never seen anybody release a figure of this maybe there's like some 3d printed stuff out there for it but I've never seen an actual you know action figure type version of this or even a model from like one of the bigger companies out there that you usually see creating models like collect day safari ltd pns so everything like that nobody's made one of these so far so it's really neat to have one of course it's not that old of a species you know it's only a few years old but it's just in general still nice to see mattel giving us stuff that we don't get to see very often and the figure looks pretty cool definitely a bit larger than i would have liked i kind of expected this one to be similar to some of the others that we've had like the scutasaurus set and stuff where you have like the uh and like the guanlong and you have like the smaller figures i kind of thought this one should be like that maybe even giving you two of them so that you have like maybe a little uh i guess pack of jackapill but unfortunately they've just given us more of like your standard size range for this one but you can see the back of the box is just the same as it was for the lophus trophius showing off the entire wave of course of these figures and now past this point the only other ones that are out would be the dimetrodon which i think is the same dimetrodon we had for jurassic world dominion and then the sungaripterus which is actually a new repaint of that previously released pterosaur so let's go ahead pop this out of the box and i think we're just going to jump straight to a closer look and we'll check it out from there so starting up here at the head sculpt of our jackapill you can see it looks pretty good overall i think they've given it some very nice very rough looking skin texture but you can see a good bit of variation to the scales and even from the you know head to the lower jaw the skin texture seems a bit different in each area which is pretty cool you can also see the eyes painted with a yellow given a nice black pupil also has a bit of a gloss coat to it one thing that i think is weird about the figure though is as you move up into the beak you can see the beak is painted with a dark gray for the upper part and then the lower part has the same light tone that we have for the lower jaw rather than them just painting the entire thing the dark gray like i think they should have even weirder you can see that the upper part here which has the dark gray has a nice gloss coat to it but then the lower part does not so it doesn't really match up very well at all so that is one area that i feel like could have definitely been improved on the figure but you can see the nostrils and everything up here and you start to pick up like these ridges here moving along the back of the dinosaur's neck and they're painted with like an orangish brown actually the back of the head and then leading into the neck and again painted with an orangish brown which is actually pretty cool to see a good bit of variation of color to a Mattel release you can even see more of those down here on the side of the neck one downside for the figure though is it actually does not have an articulated jaw and it's kind of few and far between that we get a Mattel release without an articulated jaw so kind of strange at the same time but as you continue to move down you can see the detailing looks pretty decent especially up here as you have kind of like that armored look moving along the back of the dinosaur we do have articulation in the neck you can get the neck to go down about that far and then up about that high it does not go left and right at all just basically up and down as you continue to move down into the body you can see that we basically have like this light tone following along the lower part of the body and then you have this darker not really a dark brown it's still a fairly light brown but obviously a much darker tone than we have for the lower body but the brown again follows along the course of the back of the dinosaur you continue to see that armor look following along the back as well and uh, you also again continue to see those kind of like ridges and everything following along the back of the dinosaur and of course they all feature that sort of orangish brown coloration as you lead out you can see they also have some very nice fine detail to them and uh, again another thing that's really cool about mattel is a lot of the newer figures they've been giving kind of like damage and injuries and stuff and you can see one of well if you could focus on it one of these uh little ridges here moving along the back actually is chipped so that's a really cool little idea that mattel put into this one you know recently they've been doing things like that like having the uh end of the tail of the cryptops again kind of like bitten off and now this one having just like a chip out of that ridge really cool stuff 
But as you move back down into the lower part of the body, you can see again, you've got all sorts of variation to the skin texture and scale detail and everything. You can kind of see like some scoots moving along. You do have articulation in the arms, of course, forward and back like you usually do. Some decent muscle definition in the arms as you move down. You've got, uh, again, the fingers sculpted nicely. No coloration for the nails at all, though, which is pretty standard for these type of figures. As you move back here into the leg, you can see again, you have that sort of armored look to the upper part of the thigh moving down and then you have again really quite vibrant scale detail leading down through the course of the side of the leg you've also got the knee right there in the front and of course a nice big calf muscle back here with some more of those sort of armored like scoots back there as you move down into the foot you've got some scoots moving down the toes you've got some more of those side scoots here basically running down along the side of the foot and again really quite fine scale detail as you lead down into the sides of the toes you've got a nice gloss coat for the nail no actual paint work but the gloss coat does look really good and you can see again some nice cracks and crevices to the nails which is really cool and again you can get a nice look at that foot sculpt over there and how the nails are really quite nicely shining you do of course also have articulation in the legs forward and back but it is super super stiff just like the articulation was on the Lophistrophius that I had reviewed recently. As you move back, you can see you've got some more injuries on this one, just like a lot of the newer Chaos Theory figures have had, which again is something that I really do quite like. As you lead back into the tail, you can see that we actually have that brown following almost the entire way out into the tail, well, it does go out into the tail, but almost the whole way. But of course, the armored area sort of starts to kind of taper off as you lead out. And you can see, again, we basically just have that light tip out there for the tail. But one thing that is cool is the fact that that does run the whole way out, which allows the figure to almost have a fully painted look and feel. If only it had painted nails. But again, we've got the swivel tail and everything as per usual. If you look at the opposing side, of course, it's going to look pretty much the same. In fact, the arms and everything look the same on this side. The only real difference would be the positioning of the leg, I would say, is obviously a bit more forward compared to the opposing side. We do have the fax app code here. If I can pull that up, there we go. And if you want to add that one to your collection, there you go. They've tried to hide it a little bit more conveniently here on this one. Doesn't look perfect, but definitely better than some of the other figures that have that going on. But it's definitely a very cool looking figure. As far as a size goes, it's pretty much your standard. As per usual, you are looking at right around a little over 7 inches or about 18 centimeters in length. And then for a height in the position it's currently in, a little hair over two and three quarter inches or just a bit over seven centimeters for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A Human being next to our Jackapil from Mattel. And you can see again, it's definitely in your standard Danger Pack size range. No real difference here in the size compared to most other figures like this. And there is a comparison next to the Lophistrophius I recently had reviewed as well, showing you that they are pretty much the same size. The only real difference is the fact that the Jackapil is just a little bit thicker in the body. And one final comparison with a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus just to give you again one final idea of the size and the fact that it is pretty much your usual Danger Pack size range. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Chaos Theory Danger Pack jack up hill is a very cool figure actually but it doesn't come with a few downsides because one I really would have liked to have seen them sort of incorporate an articulated jaw though with having such a small mouth it might have looked a little awkward so I'm kind of like up in the air with that one I don't know if I... I really wanted that articulated jaw, or if I think it's probably best to keep it this way, but it would have been fun to see them figure a way out to make the jaw articulate. But the one thing that is a bummer with this one is the fact that the upper part of the beak is a different tone of color compared to the lower part of the beak, which is very strange and I think looks awkward on the figure. It doesn't stand out terribly, but it could have looked better if they just made the entire beak that dark tone. Outside of that, though, as you move through the course of the figure, I think it is very nicely sculpted. Overall, looks very highly detailed and has a pretty fun color scheme, nice and naturalistic. Nothing overly flashy, but it looks good. And uh, again, you've got some nice tones of color used for it on top of everything. And the fact that we actually have color from head to tail is really cool. It just would have been nice to have painted nails. The articulation is decent. Nothing overly amazing there either, but it's pretty much what you come to expect when it comes to the Mattel Danger Pack releases.
So as a whole, it's another really neat figure, definitely a very nice species choice that I'm really happy to see in the Mattel line, or any line, honestly, as far as that goes, but I still think it's just a little bit too big. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit smaller, but it's still a super, super cool looking figure. So overall, definitely worth picking up. So make sure you check this out again at your local Walmart. That's where they are starting to show up right now. If it's not there now, it should be soon. So make sure you grab it when you can, and of course, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.